if I can make this knife, so can you. And you can probably do a lot better job. So let's get started. look at the safety items and the tools we need. Okay, what we need here is a pair of gloves, a pair of goggles, full face shield, a mask to keep down the particulate level of the metal in the air from getting into your lungs, a belt sander, a disc grinder. I have two, you can get by with just one. You need two cutoff wheels in case you break one you have an extra one and you need a flap disc wheel and then you need some pliers needle nose and lineman's pliers and then you need various clamps to hold the project down until you're finished with it and that's about all you need you probably have these at your home right now take the pattern that you have of the knife that you designed and trace it onto the meat cleaver or the metal that you're going to cut. Take your time and then take it over to the bench, strap it down, clamp it down, and start cutting slowly.
beginnings of a really good outdoor knife from a meat cleaver. The basic shape. Now we have to just finish it. It's a work in progress. Nice and thick stainless steel. I maintained the temper. I didn't push it too hard. So everything ought to be just right once we get it ground up we'll be able to baton wood take out a dinosaur with it <laughs> we'll see so you can take metal take a meat cleaver make your own custom outdoor knife Well, I've already been working on this knife, trying to put a little bit of an edge on it. Trying to shoot for a scandy grind, but we'll see what it comes up to. This is a good knife. It was one that you saw me earlier go ahead and cut out of a uh, meat cleaver. Now the thing about it is, I didn't want to go ahead and put this in a forge and reheat treat it. So I went ahead and I took my time. I did rush it just a little bit, but fortunately nothing happened. I did not uh, take away the heat treatment and the hardness of it. This here is Pakistani stainless steel high carbon. This is a little bit older meat cleaver that I took. And uh, I'll tell you what, this, this is one heck of a knife. It's strong. I've already batoned some wood with it, but I'm not too crazy about uh, batoning wood with any knife. That's why they make hatchets and axes and splitting bars and things like that. But anyway, I'm um, going to go ahead and work on this here a little bit more, put more of an edge on it. Let's take a good look at that. Now one thing I do wish was that the tang was a lot longer, but I'll probably end up taking this handle off sometime in the future, putting a new handle on it it would be called scales to other people but anyway um, that's just what I've got to work with and I'm kinda happy with the overall shape of it but what I want to do up here and I may have to take this to a grinder or just go ahead and put this on here for a while I'm um, running 80 grit that's pretty coarse sandpaper but I was wanting to take that little hump back off of there and just go straight across what I did was I took a piece of tape lined it up straight going across and then colored that in with a permanent marker so if you can imagine this here is all cut off that's going to look pretty sharp and then go ahead and put more of a uh, edge on the knife polish it up a little bit I guess if you want or I was thinking about putting a patina on there with vinegar so taking an old meat cleaver putting a design on it, cutting it out, it kind of worked pretty good. And this is strong. This is some strong steel, I'll tell you what. It's a little bit older, but it works fine. The metal doesn't know how old it is. The important thing is I maintain the temper of the steel. I don't have to fire it back up and all of that. And uh, there's a lot of times you got steel laying around, maybe you've got an old meat cleaver, you can go ahead and make a knife that you want out of that. 
cut it, take your time, go through everything you got to go through. It'll work for you. Well, the reason why I was moving it back and forth is to dissipate the heat instead of just putting it in one spot, grinding it down, generating a whole lot of heat. You can see, it's a work in progress, but it's coming along. Look at that. Now, you can see where the edge is kind of turned just a little bit because it's so thin. Something you got to remember, when you get the metal real thin, it heats up a lot quicker. And anytime you get metal thin, even though it's the strongest, the best metal in the world, that metal becomes real weak at that thin spot. Henceforth, when people 
they get their razor edges on their knives, right? And they're so happy of them, slice paper, cardboard, slice whatever. Well, that's great, but that edge is a lot weaker than a thicker edge. Conversely, a thicker edge won't be that sharp. But that thicker edge won't break or chip on you or dull out as quick as a super thin edge. It won't be as sharp, but you can still get a really sharp knife, a moderately thin blade, an edge, it'll work fine. So we can polish this up, get it looking the way we want, a little bit later, I don't know, maybe a couple months from now when I get some more time, I'll go ahead and probably take this off, the handle, put a good handle on there, make a custom handle. Shoot, this is good enough for anything. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty good. It'll work. High carbon, stainless steel, a little bit older design. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like it. I hope you get some ideas too. You can even take older knives, even thick kitchen knives, cut them the way you want, put a good edge on them. You just saved yourself fifty, a hundred dollars or more, and you got yourself a pretty good little outdoor knife. <laughs> and you could use it for whatever, bushcraft or what have you. Or if you want a baton wood, bang, bang, bang. Thanks a lot for watching. See, this is called Jim Peak. Okay, this is what I wanted to do. I want to put some jimping on top of my knife. And the reason why I want that is that I can go ahead and grab the knife on the handle and then come up with my thumb and apply additional pressure and control over the knife if I'm cutting into wood or slashing or whatever. Even if I wanted to use this knife, which is large enough, with a seven inch blade to go ahead and flush down animals if I'm in the field. So what you do, you secure your knife in a vise. You want to make sure you either use a plastic or a rubber jaw insert. Since I can't find mine, I had to put pieces of rubber in one side, in the other, clamp it. That way I won't mar the blade because I still need to polish it. So. The jimping is where you put little cuts in the top. Most of the time you grab your knife like this, but if you have to, or if you have to, like me sometimes, I gotta get way up in there to go ahead and push. So I'm gonna cut two more and show you basically how you do it. You take a triangular file, you secure your knife good first, then you take a triangular file and you get a little ridge started. Ideally, you go ahead and you mark off the areas. I've already done most of this here basically as an example. So I'm going to put another cut here and then one up here and I'll be done. So what are we going to do here? We're going to go just like this. I'm trying to do it so you can see easy with the video otherwise I'd be right on top of it. Try to keep it straight. Most of the things I cut usually crooked but <laughs> I try to keep it straight. So. I only want to take it down just ever so much. Let's see. It's pretty even. You have to take this one down just a little bit more. Alright, then one more right up here. Get that started. There you go. Pretty much done. This is called jimping. Again, so you can grab it up here. Up in here, you can polish all that. And also, when you use a ferrocium rod to go ahead and start a fire, since I'm left handed, let me get this out of here. Since I'm left handed, I'd be picking it up this way. Put the ferrocium rod here and then pulling the rod. And right there goes all the sparks. 
but you can see here it is now I just clean that up buff that out make sure there's really no sharp edges unless you want them a little sharp this isn't too bad there's my knife right there that's how you put jimping on doesn't take long at all try to make them even so they look real nice the cuts they're not too bad for being offhand thank you for watching if you have any questions go ahead and leave a message below please like subscribe and share this video one thing I might want to consider doing is sharpening this 90 degree spine in the places where I'm going to be using a ferrocium rod otherwise it'll be a little bit more difficult to get a spark so that's something you might want to consider But again, I want to sharpen this, get it flat 90 degrees. So it's absolutely sharp right here. So it digs down in here. Of course it'd help, I'd scrape off more of this protective coating on here. <laughs> there you go. So you're gonna be able to start a fire. Now, let me put this down to the side. Let me do something right here. This is a pretty good sized piece. Chinese elm. Now hopefully my baton won't break. Got a little one here. Notice how that's going right through there. Getting a bigger baton. Chinese elm. Okay, let's see what we can do. A piece of Chinese elm. Now on larger pieces, because this knife's so thick, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So it goes right through. No damage to the edge. Good hardened steel. Two by four redwood, something that's not very hard. No problem. Another piece of this. Chinese elm. Not too bad. Everybody's always wanting to do a fuzz stick or something. If your knife's sharp, it'll do that. You want to get the perfect curls, you're going to have to go with a, a thinner edge. But you can get enough on there. Get a fire started. There you go.